in celebration I tried to draw a little rose next to my HBC tattoo. It kind of looks less like a flower and more like a deformed butterfly. Deformed butterfly or otherwise, rose is absolutely perfect. It was about a year and a half ago I uploaded my first video with my excitement for Ocean's 8. It's been a long wait, but I can say 100% it has been worth the wait. Now obviously, evidently by the fact that I'm madly in love with HBC and I'm addicted to Sandra Bullock and I love Kate Blanchett and Anne Hathaway, my views here will be biased. I am well aware that my perception of Ocean's 8 should be taken with a pinch of salt because I was always going to love it. But at the same time, when I sat down and analysed various aspects of it, I I'd like to think that even if the cast was completely different, I would still have loved it. So obviously Ocean's 8 grew out of the previous Ocean's 11, 12, 13, and the difference is it's an all-female lead. And the first thing I want to say about that is that it doesn't feel like a feminist film, which is great. And I think the only other recent film to have succeeded with that is Ghostbusters, Paul Feig's Ghostbusters. Because often when a film has an all-female lead, it's like it's pushing feminism in your face, with the exception of Suffragette, with um, HBC was also in that. That was obviously a feminist film. But often if a film has a female lead, it's because they're telling a feminist story. But other than the fact that it's just saying that these women are amazing and intelligent and very clever and, and as it turns out, very, very funny, it's, it's not actually being read as a feminist film unless you choose to. Having said that, these women are... <laughs> they're committing a jewellery heist. So the fact that they're trying to rob a very, very expensive necklace is a little bit of a female thing, but I think it could have worked with a male cast as well because never do they say, I'm a female and I can do this. It's always just, I can do this and I think that's incredible. Not that I'm advocating that anybody ever steals anything, but I do think obviously it was very cast-led and I, I love Rose. HBC playing Rose is wonderful. Her Irish accent is gorgeous. Rose is one of my favourite names ever. I Just when I found out that that's what her character was going to be called, I kind of freaked out a little bit. Obviously, she's amazing, and I'm, again, I may be biased in saying this, but I feel like most of the comedy came from her. And also a lot of Debbie's wit, Debbie Ocean, Sandra Bullock, she was very quick. Um, she said things very dryly, but they were very funny. Her wit was incredible. Um, Kate Blanchett was amazing. Anne Hathaway wasn't in it as much as I would have liked, but it works for the narrative. And on that note, what a narrative. So the narrative, first of all, as a premise, I thought was very exciting. Obviously the fact that they're stealing a piece of jewellery is very feminine. So it works that it's an all-feminine cast. But at the same time, obviously, could they have done something that was a little less girly? It still would have worked. I think it would have worked. But because it was a necklace and we had this fashion show and everything, we, they had the most incredible costumes. And I, I mean, amazing. I think... Anne Hathaway and, and HBC had the most perfect costumes. Uh, amazing, and, and Helena's hair was perfect. That's not relevant to the story, but I just a little aside into how my brain works there. But the narrative was very good. The development, the pacing was incredible. Debbie brings together these women at a, at a really great pacing. It's not, right, ten minutes in, here's everyone. But it doesn't take the entire film to assemble everybody. I thought it, it, it kind of developed at a really great pacing. Obviously with any kind of heist film there has to be hurdles, they can't just get in smoothly, get out and, and get on with their lives. Uh, but I was worried that with these kind of films they may put in too many roadblocks and it may become too challenging and you lose faith in them and as soon as you lose faith in those characters you kind of just think well what's the point, they're not going to do it. Everything kind of evolved at a perfect rate, we had maybe half an hour of things going smoothly then suddenly a bombshell was dropped and they had to try and problem solve and they were very quick at problem solving. Each woman had their own character, a kind of character personality that brought something to the story. Maybe I shouldn't call them women, maybe I should just call them person. I'm not really sure if that would be a negative feminist reading into this but it was, it was phenomenal. I have no complaints with the narrative, the pacing, the development or the premise. As I said at the beginning, probably a little bit biased. In fact, scrap that. 100% biased. But the film is amazing. I'm not the only person saying that, so it, it must be true. 